So this is a 2021 electrostatics test review. This will do a decent job of getting you ready for the test. So I have to look at all the other notes and, and just be prepared for anything. Uh, first question is, would you have an attraction or repulsion with the following charges? Well, you would look at the, the signs in front of them. And if you have the same sign, it's going to be a repulsion. And then if you looked at the signs in front of these numbers and you see that they're opposite, they're going to be a, this is going to be an attraction. In a problem like this, it gives you the, the first charge, and these are all going to be interacting separately. The two would have the same charges too. Well, this positive is going to repel another positive. And since that was positive, we're just going to move it on over here. So this is positive, it would repel another positive. And since this is positive, once again, we're just going to move it on over here. So this is positive, well, it would attract a negative, and these two show an attraction. They're trying to stick together. Which of the following would it, oh, with the following increase or decrease the electrostatic force between charges, well, if we double the charge in one object, it's going to increase it because if this number goes up, that number goes up. Double the distance between the objects, the double the thing on the bottom, well, the force is actually going to go down as a result of that and at an increased rate because it's squared. Um, if you half the charge in one object, so you take that and make it one half of what it was before, it would also decrease the force. And then if you double the charge of an object, but also double the distance, this is going to have a greater effect. So doubling the distance is going to actually decrease, not as much as if this wasn't changed at all, but it's not going to make, one, doubling a charge and doubling a distance, it's not going to make up for it. And so it still would overall decrease. If you type, typed in 1, 2, 1 over 2 squared, you'll see you'll get a number less than 1. How much would the electrostatic force uh, change if you double one charge and triple the distance between the objects? Um, you would set up an equivalent. You would just take that and you double the charge of one object, triple the distance, and you get 0.222 times. How would you describe the relationship between force and charge? Force and charge are going to be directly related. One goes up, the other one goes equally up. Um, how would you describe the relationship between force and distance? Well, if one goes up, the other one goes down, but not at the same ratio. It's going to be inverse because one goes down, but it's going to be inverse squared because it has that extra effect, as you can see in that square right there. Similarities and differences, differences between electrostatic force and gravitational force. Um, if you take a look, they both if you calculate a field force. Um, neither of them need contact to have a force felt. Both forces have that inverse square distance relationship. See how d squared is on both of them. And they both have a constant that's going to relate the, them. But the, what they're relating is going to be different. Uh, Gravity is related mass, relating masses, whereas charge is relating charges to distance. Um, also, gravity is very weak. It's times 10 to the negative 11. It's, it's much smaller than 1, whereas electrostatic force is very strong. Um, gravity will always have an attraction, whereas electrostatic force can have that attraction, but it also could have a repulsion. So arrow going the opposite way represents that. And then once again, when you look at the number, that, that constant is very big here where this is very small. And then also just the, the charges on electrostatic force versus masses in the universal gravitation uh, force equation. What is an electrical con conductor? It's going to be a, an object that has freely moving electrons. So it's going to be a metal is going to have an electron cloud. It's just kind of shared between everything at once. And you can easily neutralize a conductor because all those electrons will pretty much move at the same time really quickly away from it if you gave it a path away from a charged object. An electrical insulator does not have the freely flowing electrons. So if you're trying to neutralize an insulator, it's not going to be as easy to do. You might neutralize it one single part of it, but you need to, it'd be hard to, to get rid of that charge all at once on an insulator. Electrical fields around these point charges, so it's always going to be away from positives and towards the, the negatives. And if you have a stronger charge, you're going to have more arrows to represent it. Also, if you have a positive and negative, the arrows would go towards the negative, away from the positive. And it'd form this kind of pattern. And then two repulsing charges, well, you would form this pattern, and the arrows would represent, by looking at the arrows, if I didn't know what these charges were, I'd know that these were positives, because always the arrows are drawn away from positives towards negatives. Always the direction of positive charge would flow if it was placed in this field and it would flow away from that positive. Describe what uh, what what cause is, it should be causes, and is occurring when someone gets shocked. So a person will be charged probably by friction. Maybe they're walking across the carpet and the rubber soles rubbing against the carpet. 
and they they have a charge and no charge wants this no electrons want to stay next to other electrons um no 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 none, none of the same charge is going to want to stay next to the same charge so you might be positively or negatively charged you're positively charged that means you gave off electrons and you need electrons to neutralize yourself if you're negatively charged you have extra electrons and you have to get rid of those well the shock occurs when you there's a path somehow you touch a doorknob or something that gives the path of the electrons away from your body if you're negative or towards your body if you're positive and either way the, the electrons will move and you'll neutralize yourself what causes hairs to stand up when charged so if you ever get your hair all charged up um, they want to stay away because the, the best way that charges can stay away from each other is to go straight up the the distance between when the hair standing straight up in the air if you have a uh, charged enough hair um, the distance is the greatest when, when it's standing straight up. So it's not going to want to lay flat on your head because all those charge, charges, of whether you're charged negative or positive, the charges are going to be next to each other and they're going to be repelling each other. They don't want to stay on your stay on your head. Your hair would go from being down to being up like you see right here, giving it the most uh, the, the most neutral, I guess, the, um, the, 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 the best configuration so that the, the charged particles can all be away from each other as much as possible. Okay, an object, an object becomes negatively charged when electrons move onto the object. Object becomes positively charged when electrons move away from the object. Always electrons moving to charge an object. Describe charging by friction. Well, friction, you have two objects rubbing up against each other. And when they rub up against each other, there's electrons going to be knocked off from these two two objects. They're going to be in the middle. Well, one of them is going to want to stick hold on to electrons more than others. So if you have a higher affinity and less affinity, so you would need different different material. Those charges are going to want to stick to the one that has highest affinity, and that highest affinity would become negative that lowest affinity would become positive as these start moving their way over here. Um, they'll be, whatever that is negative, this one's gonna be equally positive. So when we're using this table to try to determine which objects rub together like silk and wool, which one would be positive, which one would be negative, we rub the two together, the ones up top have the greater affinity, so this would have become negative, this would become positive. Whichever one's on top would become negative, the one on the bottom would be positive. So here's one example. We've got PVC and silk. Will this become negative? This would become positive. And then we take the second example, paper and hair. So I have hair here, I have paper there. Paper becomes negative, hair becomes positive. Describe charging by induction. So charging by induction, you have an object, a negatively charged object, or we're just a charged object getting close to another object. Electrons will be repelled from a negative, leaving a positive charge closest to that negative. So no contact, if you, as you can see, there's nothing touching. It's temporary because as soon as you move away that PVC pipe, those electrons come back and neutralize, and it always is the opposite charge. Notice how that charge left there is these little blue dots are positives. That charge left there is positive next to this negatively charged PVC pipe. Conduction, you're going to have an actual a neutral object that's going to have electrons. This has a lot of extra electrons. Those electrons are going to flow onto that, that object. This is still neutral because it would be a, some sort of insulator. So it still have a lot of negative charges, but it gave away some of those negatives really quickly to this object right here. And this one became negative as well. So there's contact because you see there's, there's touching, an actual transfer of electrons so it's permanent and then the same charge is given off. So a negative makes something else negative. A positive would make something else positive because it would suck off electrons or do the opposite of what you're seeing here. But there would still be contact and it would still be whatever charge you have on the object that's charged, the other object would have the same charge as a result. What must be done to store electric potential energy? You're going to have to do work. You're going to have to push a, a, you know, a positive, uh, you're, you're going to have to push a negatively charged object. Let's say you had a negative sphere. We have to take this and we have to push it towards a negative. Or we can take a you know another, we can take a positive and we can pull it away from if we pulled that away from a negative, that would also take work and that would also charge up this proton. But this positively charged object would want to get close to that negative again. But um, let's just go with the negative example. We'd have to push 
towards this, giving it a force over a distance. We do work when we're work equals force times distance. We do work, and as a result, we restore potential energy. Describe electric potential and how it's different than electric potential energy. Well, electric potential or voltage is a potential energy in a single charge, whereas electric potential energy is the entire object. So if you remember from before, you might have a lot of different electrons, and this thing's completely charged. But we're only concerned with one single one of those electrons and its desire to flow when we're talking about voltage or electric potential. Or potential energy, once once again, or is it not potential energy? Electric potential, potential difference is the third way that we move. So electric potential, voltage, and 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 um are there, there's there's different ways just to, to call to, to say say voltage. But the unit's voltage for all three of those, whereas if we talk about potential energy, we're gonna have joules. So potential potential difference is the other one. So you have potential difference, electric potential and voltage, all meaning the same thing, which sounds like electric potential energy, but it's 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 different. It's slightly different because it's a per charge thing. Okay, so here we have a charge, and also this is if you if you're taking the test in E class, it has some test, some test questions will have the blanks for scientific notation. Um, so you're going to have to do scientific notation no matter what, even though the number is small enough where you, sh you shouldn't have to. Um, so let's just take a look at how we do this again. So here we have one charge, a distance, another charge. Uh, we're going to do Coulomb's law. We're going to use that 9 times 10 to the 9th for the K. And we get an answer when we plug in these numbers uh, of 0.354 newtons. Well, to do scientific notation, you always want one number, a decimal. So we take that number, 3.54. And it's going to be times 10 to the first because, actually, that's not the answer. This should be 35.4 newtons. And so 3.54, we multiply it by, that's pretty much like saying 10. And the trick is in your calculator, you can just put 3.54 times 10 to the first and see your answer. And your answer calculator will throw that back at you so you know you did the right scientific notation. But this is just saying add one zero to this number or move this decimal place one, one zero away. And the unit here would be newtons because it's force. How far away is a charge of 1.4 times 10 to the one coulombs from another charge? Um, so it's asking you how far away. So we're asked for distance. We're given a force. We have to rearrange this equation for distance. When you plug in your values, and if you do everything correctly, once again, extra parentheses, keeping everything in underneath the square root, or just do it in steps. Either way, you should get 99.4 meters. Well, to turn that once again into scientific notation, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the first digit only, 9.94. But we want to make it 10 times. This number has to be multiplied by 10 or, or 10 one times to get that number. Once again, the trick in your calculator is to take the 9.94, do the second E1 equals, and you'll see this number thrown back at you so you know you did it right, and the unit here is going to be meters. What's the magnitude of electrical field that produces a force of 1.1, or sorry, 1.1 times 10 to the negative seventh newtons on this charge? So it's asking for electric field that gives you this charge, it gives you this force. Plug in all the numbers. When we do the work, once again, use the exponents or have extra parentheses down here. You're going to get 220 newton coulombs. So now back to 2.2, and this is going to be two zeros bigger than 2.2. So move two zeros, two zeros, and we get that. Once again, the check, the quick check is 2.2 EE2 equals, and you're going to see that number thrown back at you, and the unit is going to be newton coulombs. How much potential energy is required to send this charge? this voltage right here so we have voltage we have charge we're asked for potential energy we have that right there all plugged in and rearrange plugged in um, once again when you're doing the rearranging you have to multiply both sides by q to get rid of that and pe equals vq or qv whichever one it doesn't matter it's a it's the same thing mathematically when you plug in those numbers and you get the math just like this you're going to get 3.72 times 10 to the fifth joules and that one is already usually calculators will come up showing this already um you know the the, the calculator if, if it says something's 3.72 e, e5 well then it's giving you the scientific notation but if it didn't you could just take this number and retype it into your calculator and when you type it into your calculator you're going to see three seven and then it's going to be moved five times so one two three four five add zeros right here 
So this is your number is going to see uh, your number in your calculator is going to be something like this if it was giving you the whole amount. And once again, we can kind of back it out. So 3.72, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 becomes this number right here, which would be 3,720. 3, and that's going to be, um, actually, I think that's the decimal place, not a decimal place, not a zero. So one, two, three, four, five. It's going to be 372,000. That's what your calculator would show you. Um, once again, that trick is just type this number into your calculator, scientific notation, and read it off. And it should tell you the value that you, it should, should match the value you have. Um, this is for the honors problems, or the honors problems where, where we have honors students, where we have a couple charges interacting with one. So you have to deal with these charges individually. So you just look at how A is interacting with B. Since we have a two, we have a nine as our separate charge. We're going to ignore the negatives for our math. And we get this force A, this positive. Um, and we're only concerned with what's happening in charge A. So A would be attracted to B. So A would be attracted to B by this force, 4.05 times 10 to the to 10th newtons. So we're going to call right positive because we're going to add this to our next value in a second. So we're going to have a positive sign that, that comes up that the positive represents right, not any sort of charge or anything going on. And then we look at AC, how, how these two A and C, we're ignoring this. We're now going to have five meters between the two because we can add them up. So we have a two and five charge, two coulomb and five coulomb charge, and we're going to get 3.6 times 10 to the ninth newtons. But here we have a positive charge pushing A to the left. And so since A is going to go to the left, we're going to have a negative value here. And then we're ready to go ahead and add those together. So the, the forces on A are going to be uh, left 3.6 times 10 to the ninth and right 4.05 times 10 to the tenth. Add those numbers together, we get a positive value. And so our answer is the force on A overall is going to be 3.69 times 10 to the tenth newtons to the right because this was positive.